Hello, it's Deborah from The Attic and today it's playtime so I have a slightly different video for you today. I want to show you some f ways that you can make a faux metal effect on all sorts of things that you might have kicking around your craft room or tucked away in your crafting drawer and I'm going to show you how to achieve this finish using embossing powders and some uh, papers and lace for texture. I'm also going to show you how to make this tag. This is a plain card tag that's been treated so that it looks metallic and that it's had some uh, letters stamped down the side of it as well. I'm also going to show you how you can transform any old brads that you may have in different colours that don't suit your project into metallic so that it will suit your project and as an example maybe you can see the colours on the back of these legs which haven't been uh, embossed so this is yellow, orange and blue so that's how they started and, and this is how they finished up after they'd had some metal effect added to them. So that's what we're going to be doing today. I have had this kicking around in the back of my crafting drawer for years and years. This is called Domino Size and although I've lost the um, bag uh, label for this I do know that this is stamp board. I'll provide a link to it below the video and it's, it's ideally suited for just stamping images straight onto uh, a nice thick piece of base and so you do your stamping on it. But I thought it would make a fantastic base for taking embossing powder and making uh, this sort of metallic effect. I'm going to leave that there as our sample, pop it out of the way because I don't want to reheat that. And the embossing powder that I've used is actually a mix that I've made myself. It's um, a mix that uh, I've it looks like pewter, which is why I've written pewter on my little jar. And that is a combination of gold and silver embossing powder. And you just mix it until you get the proportions uh, about right. It's not quite 50-50, I think it's more silver than it is gold. But it's up to you which depth of colour you prefer. If you prefer to lean towards silver or lean towards gold. If you don't want to mix up your own, then you can buy it. I have a WOW uh, metallic platinum, this is regular, and this is very similar. And either of these will do the job. I'm going to uh, finish off my own little mix here. I've got a piece of yellow paper which will catch the embossing powder that I don't use, and I'm using a watermark stamp pad. So it's just uh, clear embossing uh, ink. I obviously need to get a new one because mine's had some pretty heavy use over the months. And uh, just push your stamp board into the ink pad, put it onto a piece of scrap paper so that, that will catch any excess embossing powder and chuck the powder over it. I'm working on an artist board. This is just a nice thick board. It will protect my mat and table underneath. Once you've got your little block covered, heat it up. That gives a really beautiful solid bar of colour. I absolutely love that. I'm going to let that cool and then I'm going to give it a second coat because that is what will give it texture. While that is cooling, after having its second coat applied and heated, I'm going to take a charm. This is um, a charm that I have kicking around. I have quite a few of these because I like to use them on journals. For the purposes of our little embellishment that we want to make. I don't really want this circle here. So I've got some um, wire clippers and I'm going to clip that off and hopefully I won't take off the butterfly antennae. I'm going to use the same uh, powder on this as well. And this time, to make sure that the embossing powder gets into all the little nooks and crannies, 
I'll pop that out of the way so it doesn't dazzle you. I'm going to use um, a Ranger embossed pen. This is a clear embossed pen and it means that I can put the embossing ink into all the little nooks and crannies on the butterfly because if I just pop the butterfly onto the flat ink pad it might not get into all these little areas. And I'm going to cover it with the pewter embossing powder. And I've got a pair of tweezers that just make this easier to handle. I'm going to heat set that. I'm going to try and heat set it on my yellow piece of paper. Move these to one side so they don't get heated again. Because as soon as that is hot, I want to add another layer of the pewter powder. But I don't want to be picking it up and moving it because it's going to be very hot. The layer goes on while it's still hot. And then I mess about with my tweezers. Tweezers aren't always easy, oops, easy things. That looks like that's got a good lump of molten embossing powder on it. I'm going to clear this away. Just put that to one side so I don't accidentally heat it. And then heat this again. And then I'm going to let that dry. Now it's worth pointing out that you do lose detail. When you heat twice you do lose detail. So it depends what you want. Sometimes one layer of embossing powder alone will uh, give you the... Oh, wow, you can see how, how molten that is. Uh, sometimes one is sufficient, one layer. I like two because I find then it blends better when I add it onto my block. This is now cold enough for me to touch it. To add detail to our little embellishment, there's a couple of things that you can do. You can add uh, a little piece of ripped paper. This is from a book. This has just been ripped and glued onto the base. Or you can use a little bit of lace. And I like the lace way to go. So I'm going to glue that onto my piece of stamp board. This is nice and thick, this board. So add the glue to the side as well, so you know it's in place properly. It's gripped really well. Now I'm going to add my butterfly. I'm just using an ordinary glue. This is Cosmic Shimmer Acrylic Glue. This is quite good. It gives good adhesion. But it does take a, a time, a little moment for it just to set. So I'll add my butterfly there. Slightly on the wonk. Putting it onto the lace will also help it grab a little better. The lace uh, this is a very smooth texture. The lace gives it a little bit of tooth, I suppose. On this one, you can see I've added some lettering. It says birdhouse to match the charm. Uh, but, uh, oddly, for someone that does the amount of stamping that I do, I don't have any um, rubber or acrylic or polymer alphabet stamps. I use these little babies. These are metal stamps, alphabet stamps. They're from Impress Art. I'll provide a link. You can find these um, online. I'll provide a link. They're not terribly expensive. 
uh, maybe about 13 or 14 pounds in the UK. Um, and I have a couple of uh, different sets. So I think I'm going to do a word. Uh, let's have fly high, that would be nice. The way that I've found is best uh, to add, especially if you're using metal letters, um, you need a little hammer. Obviously, if you have um, ordinary stampers alphabets, you, you don't need a hammer. This is just my way of doing it um, without having to go and buy um, new rubber stamps. And I'm using black, so I find that if I just dip the letter into the black before I smack it onto my tile, I get quite a good effect. The other thing I've noticed, and again, if you're using a, a rubber stamp, you won't need to worry about this, but if you're using the metal ones, don't whack it, don't really bash it, just give it a tap, because this can be quite brittle and you can risk splitting the embossing powder. Let's see how we get on. I'm going to do the first letter. I'll show you how I do that to begin with, and then I'll, I'll complete the rest of it. So I just, uh, what's great about these is that they have an F on the front. So I'm starting with F, it has an F embossed on the front there so that I know that if I have the F towards me, I'm, I'm, uh, I've got it the right way around. I'm just going to position it and then tiny little tap. Hopefully you can see that on the camera. So I'm going to complete the rest of my phrase. I'm going to write fly. I hope you can see that. It says fly high. It's not intended to be a really sharp in your face phrase. I like the subtlety of this. I like that you have to work a little for the words. I think it's quite pretty. And then to finish it off, I'm going to use the same Nouveau Crystal Drops. These are Caribbean Ocean that I used on the birdhouse. And I put a line of little blue drops over the top, over the roof of the birdhouse, because I thought that looked rather cute. And I found, I've used other colours, but I found that this is my absolute favourite. I think it just gives a beautiful, it works so well with the pewter. It just, I, I don't know, it's a, it's a sort of colour that just makes your heart sing. I think it's a very positive colour. So just a few little drops. And I tend to keep my drops centered at the, at the around the charm that we've added. I tend not to let it interfere too much with the lettering because the lettering is so subtle. I don't really want anything else to get in the way. And usually it only needs about four or five drops. I think, I think that'll do actually. Four little drops. And that's our finished embellishment. And it fits in really nicely with all of the other ones that we've made. So that's how to make those block embellishments. And you can put those at the centre point of a card, just matte and layer. Or you can use them as embellishments on journals or on scrapbooks. You could, if you were, if you're feeling strong, you could maybe put some little hooks in the top and run a necklace through it and wear it as a necklace. The image of the flower here is taken from some thinlets. So these are uh, Sizzix dies and they're wildflower dies. And I cut one of these out in white card. And then I dipped the piece that I knew I was going to be using into my Versa marking pad, just dipped it in like that. And then I added the pewter embossing powder on the top and heat set it. Then it was just a question of sticking it onto the background. So the tag was also covered in, in the pewter. And then I used my metal lettering to add the word bloom down the side. So that's another way that you can use it. But what if you don't want to uh, use lettering? What if you want something a little bit easier? You can use just a plain piece of card, plain bit of card that, again, this was put into the water, uh, the watermark stamp pad. And then I added the pewter and I heat set it. And I had a word printed on a piece of paper. Uh, I 
took the word secrets, just cut it from a piece of printed paper and glued it onto the top and then again if you wanted to complete this you would just add this, glue it onto your background. Oops. Just try and remove the excess glue. I found hands are, are good for all sorts of things like that. That's why I end up very, very messy at the end of a, a, a play session. So that gets glued on. What I, what I think makes a difference with all of these is that because you're using the same colour of embossing powder on the raised elements as on the backgrounds, you get this rather nice effect. So that would be a really nice little embellishment on a card or again something that you would add to a junk journal, but it's, uh, it's something a little bit different. Something else that is fun is to take a plain piece of card again. Um, I've taken a piece of paper from one of my sacrificial junk journaling books. Uh, I've chosen some very dense type and I've glued the sheet of paper onto my little background and then trimmed off the excess. I've taken my embossing pen and I've gone around the outside edge only of this little piece of card and I've thrown the pewter powder all over that and heat set it and it gives you this rather nice border. Once you have the border then you can take another of the uh, flowers and again if, if uh, don't get hung up if you don't have flowers any other dyes that you have you can use decoration dyes so for example this is a uh, part of a frame die that I have and I used that on one that uh, a little block that I don't have anymore but if you wanted to add that corner, just a little corner piece, and then you could add a word, you could cut out a word and add a word there. As long as it's in the same colour, as long as it's in this pewter effect colour, you'll still get the same lovely effect. And on this one I've added uh, a little die cut fern that's had, that's been pewterized. <laughs> so those are some ideas for you for making um, use of die cuts and charms but you could also get a little bit more use from other things that you've got loafing around. Uh, this is the one that I showed you at the beginning. These are brads and very often I'm left with uh, colours of brads I just wouldn't use and I've had them in my stash for ages. This is a really good way to get use from them because although I've used pewter on this you could use any colour of embellishing. Embellishing powder? embossing powder, uh, any colour of embossing powder to get the colour that suits your project. So you can make these black, purple, gold, silver, whichever suited your purpose. And something else, buttons. Now these buttons have been coloured, not coloured, but these, these have been treated with the embossing pen. I've gone into all of the little details and each of these has been heat embossed twice. Now they're going to get their final heat embossed because I've glued them onto a little strip of card which has also had its pewter layer added. So when you've actually glued something onto it, if you want it to look more solid, if you want it to look as if it is more sort of sunk into the background, into the card, if you go over it like this with your emboss it pen. I have to keep checking everything. If you go around it with your embossing pen and then add another layer it will make it look as if it's sunk into the background and I quite like that. These buttons by the way I chose deliberately some quite strongly coloured buttons so they were a dark blue, a red and I think a green and I wanted them to have strong colour so I could see how effective covering them up with the pewter was.
So there we go, quite striking. Anything that you can glue onto something else, onto a background, that won't melt in the heat of your heat gun, you can pewterise. And I think I'm going to be pewterising loads of things because this is very fun. As you can see, I have gone through quite a lot of my jar. I need to um, get more powder and I think I'll do my own mix. I'm very happy with my own mix. But I do hope that you give some of these ideas a try. They're another way to add embellishments of your own design to your own projects. And uh, they're just good fun. There's all the embellishments that we've made today. I hope you found this useful. I hope that you will go and have a little bit of a play with whatever you have scattered around the house. Do make use of um, anything like buttons and brads or old, um, old thick staples. You know, those great big fat staples that you used to get. Anything like that, give it a go. And um, I hope that you have as much fun as I did. Thank you for watching, as always. And until we meet again, take care.